The most common form of cancer in Australian women is breast cancer. Among men, it's prostate cancer. One of the most effective diagnostic tools to detect whether those cancers still present a problem after surgery is what's known as a PET scan, positron emission tomography, a nuclear medicine technique that's now widely used overseas. But seven years ago, the federal government's Medicare Advisory Committee restricted funding for PET scans to only a few hospitals on the mainland, a decision some experts say has cost thousands of Australians their health and, in some cases, their lives. The decision was made after a report by a committee of cancer specialists advising the government was significantly changed, an alteration later described as scientific fraud. Matt Peacock reports. <laughs> Like many breast cancer survivors, Mary Aslanidis was fearful her disease might return. And 18 months ago, there were ominous signs. Yeah. Get a coffee. I started having blood tests, which came back abnormal. So we waited a month and then had another blood test, and it still showed high levels of high tumour markers. Um, and you've got a heap of tests here. And Assisted by family and friends, she did everything she thought she could to find out what was going on inside her body. And you went and had the CAT scan, and then you went and had the RMI. That's right. And everything kept coming back, and I kept saying, but Mary, there, there's got to be a problem. And you kept saying, I still don't feel right. After nine months of futile tests, it was her GP, not her oncologist, who suggested she have a PET scan, a test she'd never heard of. This is the machine, a positron emission tomographer at Melbourne's Peter McCallum Hospital, which revealed her cancer had returned and spread. I was very upset. My doctor drew a dry diagram of um, where it actually was, and I thought, oh no, you know. All this time's gone past and... <sighs> the PET scan Marius Lanidis paid for herself is one still denied to thousands of Australians, according to the Greens Senator Christine Milne. If there is a technology that helps cancer patients see how far the illness has spread and gives them the best options in terms of treatment and decisions in the, their lifestyle and their future, then they should have access to that technology. You said that it was in the Ministerial Committee. Christine that, Milne uh, sits on a Senate inquiry currently investigating claims the Federal Health Department manipulated a scientific report in order to limit the funding of PET scanners, restricting their availability to a handful of capital city hospitals. It appears to me as if there has been scientific fraud. That's a view echoed by a world expert on PET, Professor Rod Hicks. It's clear to me uh, that the process somehow got it terribly wrong. In 2000, Professor Hicks and other cancer specialists assessed PET's effectiveness for the health department. And while they didn't recommend an unrestricted rollout, they found that the evidence suggests that PET is safe, clinically effective and potentially cost effective. But when the scientists' report was received by the Medicare Services Advisory Committee that determines funding, a key word had been added. The evidence suggests that PET is safe, potentially clinically effective and potentially cost effective. What's more, a new introductory paragraph had been included there is insufficient evidence at this time from which to draw definitive conclusions about the clinical effectiveness and cost effectiveness of PET. Who did propose that the word potentially be inserted there? I have, I have no idea. Somebody who probably reads documents better than I do. I was horrified. I, I wrote to the chair of MSAC and said the, the primary conclusion is not consistent with our opinions nor the opinions of the wider medical community. How could I possibly have endorsed a report that cast doubt on the clinical effectiveness of a technology where I've published close to 100 papers emphasising how well it works in cancer patients? I'm a strong advocate. As a result, the Medicare committee ordered another six-year trial to collect more evidence of PET's effectiveness, a trial that Professor Hicks says was a waste of time and lives. This is a tragedy for, for Australian cancer patients uh, and for the people who fund uh, cancer care. 
we're spending millions of dollars on, on treatments which are inappropriate, futile or unnecessary based on inadequate evaluation of the presence and extent of, of cancer. Again, anchored by Michael Schulberger and Peter Hanrahan. Not just a late news, the latest. Eight years ago, the former TV presenter Michael Schulberger was one of the first patients through the PEP machine at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. Prostate cancer, the most common cancer in men, wasn't funded under the trial, but Schulberger has been able to afford the $800 each PET scan costs. Hi, Michael. Oh, right. great. great to good. see you again. Good to see you. How's everything? Yeah. 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 Okay. Most importantly, I'm feeling good. That's the main thing. So when first diagnosed, Michael Schulberger had surgery. Blood tests later showed the cancer was still there, but the standard CT and bone scans came back negative. The assumption in Michael's case with an elevated PSA is that his disease had recurred where he'd had his surgery and the treatment for that would, be, would have been radiotherapy. The PET scan showed that that was completely inappropriate. OK, we're all done there now, just bringing you out. The PET scan revealed what the others didn't, that the cancer had spread to his lymph nodes and the treatment for that wasn't radiotherapy but hormone treatment. The alternative would have meant all sorts of procedures which wouldn't have been necessary. It's a whole heap of things that would have damaged my body. And for heaven's sake, I mightn't even be here today. We do have a choice. At the time of the PET decision, the then Health Minister, Dr Michael Wooldridge, was acutely aware of possible Medicare funding blowouts. He'd been severely embarrassed when radiologists ordered dozens of extra MRI machines after learning they'd be funded in the forthcoming budget. For me, uh, it's very disappointing and it will mean when I go into negotiations with the medical profession in the future, uh, I may have to do it on a different basis. The chairman of the PET Scientific Committee, Dr Richard King, later echoed the minister's concerns. If an open-ended funding was re recommended, that uh, it would get into the same situation as uh, MRI and CT scanning, where there was a, uh, a plethora of machines placed and no, and I mean control in its broader sense, over the number of scans being done. It was largely because of this man, Tasmanian nuclear physician Dr Rob Ware, that the changes to the scientific committee's report have been revealed. It's been absolutely like pulling teeth at every step of the way trying to get information. I've been obstructed. Over five years, he lodged several FOI requests, fought to the federal court and even accosted the Prime Minister on a power walk before he won the attention of the Senate committee. Thank you for your time. Nice to meet John Perrin. Seven years on, the PET trial results are now in and as Professor Hicks expected, they showed that PET changed treatment in 50% of cases. It's incredibly important uh, to, to realise that Already by 2000, we knew that this uh, technique, PET, is substantially more accurate than a whole range of imaging techniques that we routinely use to make life and death decisions about how patients are treated. The Health Minister, Tony Abbott, has yet to make a decision on PET's future and was unavailable this week for an interview. ANSTO is an Australian government agency. But ANSTO, the government's nuclear science organisation, is clearly optimistic, announcing last Friday a $10 million joint venture with Siemens to produce radioisotopes for PET machines. Executive Director Ian Smith says that currently thousands of Australians are missing out. Yes, I think the decisions in Australia are tied up with government decisions, both federal and state, but hopefully the, uh, those decisions will be made in the light of the medical evidence. That is all Professor Hicks says he's asking for. The lesson is listen to the experts. If you can script them into the, into the process, take their advice. Science Minister Julie Bishop, while enthusiastic about ANSTO's plans to produce the isotopes, can't explain yet where they'll all be used. These are matters for discussion between the states and territories and the Federal Health Minister. Um, as Minister for Science, I'm focusing on the fact that ANSTO is now bringing its leading expertise in the production of nuclear medicines uh, to ensure that we have access to 50,000 additional doses uh, for the early detection of cancers in people across Australia. 
The Senate inquiry is not likely to report for another month, and while its chairman, ACT Liberal Gary Humphreys, rejects the accusation of fraud, he does describe the Health Department's behaviour as sloppy. My view and the committee's view would be that the department has not uh, covered itself in glory with respect to this process, that there have been failures in the process, and in particular the input of scientists to making this decision hasn't been properly uh, evaluated and allowed to be expressed. From cancer patients like Michael Schulberger though, there's nothing but outrage. I know that governments, the health department, is obviously very concerned about how much it can afford to spend. We all know that. But to actually see documentation, dare I say falsified, in order to uh, save money in the department seems absolutely outrageous, criminal.